I always get asked when we first were talking about mentoring, I always get asked by girls like, what, what advice would you give? Or when we talk about the random interview questions and podcasts that we do, the number one thing that I always tell new girls or just anyone entering any facet of entertainment is, you know, to just have a lawyer look at your contract. Don't mm -hmm. sign anything without an attorney. If it's too good to be true, it probably is. They could be your friends. They could take you out for drinks. You could have the greatest relationship. But at the end of the day, business is business. Mm -hmm. And it's not something that I feel comfortable saying. And I know that it's an ugly truth of, the, of any business, but it's always business before people. People are expendable. Entertainers are expendable. We, mm -hmm. you are expendable. It's just how it is. As you said before, it's not even always that there's someone younger and prettier. There's someone more talented. There's someone less talented. And that's another facet of the business that's hard to swallow too is, but I'm more talented, but I'm prettier. The universe has this magical way of giving us gifts or making us wait for them, making us wait our turn. Sometimes we dodge a bullet. Mm -hmm. And we don't realize that that just wasn't meant for us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're really funny out there and they're like, no, I'm going to put you through a little bit of this headache because I feel like you need to learn a lesson here. Mm -hmm. so. it's, it's hard. It's hard to remind yourself in the moments when you're not getting something that it could be a blessing in disguise. Like by you not getting that that thing, it's actually going to serve you better in the long term, right. but you're so stuck in like what you think you want, especially like right now. Or what and you again, think you deserve. Right. Or they, and that's the problem too, right? Is like the entitlement. Like I've had awful moments with that. Like I've had to really work on my ego because there were moments where I was very entitled, um, especially when I was getting all these contracts. I was like, I'm better than blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you know, you're not. Why yeah. do you think that? And you have to like really just check yourself. But, um, like me losing my contract in the moment, I was like, I was in tears. I was calling my attorney. I was seeing if there was anything I could do and there was nothing I could do. They're like, yes, like you have the right to sue because you're like, you were wrongfully terminated. However, do you want to spend a high six figures to get this? And of course not, right? It's not worth it. So, And it's so like, damaging to your psyche. Litigation oh, yeah. is the worst thing. I did not mean to interrupt you, but I don't know how my husband does this for a living because it it was seriously this it was mind bending and and terrible for for my conscious. I remember for a solid year seeing those dates on the calendar of having to go to court. I mean, it is it is so it's it's so hard on you. What's crazy too is that they actually took you through the, the litigation process because yeah. like you're just one performer. Like that's not affecting them. Like that's strictly out of vengeance. Like that it was. Well, that's yeah. what, so that's what was interesting. And a lot of years have passed, but there is still a non-disclosure, although you could probably find mm -hmm. it on the internet, but I'm not allowed to name the company, right. but they signed uh, another girl during this time who ended up also 10 years later having this exact same issue. Oof. And so the funny thing about this is they had no upside to suing me and they had no reason to sue me. It was specifically to send a message. It was to, to tell all the other companies and all the other girls, this is what we're going to do if you think you can leave. And the craziest thing to me during that time was it was two things. First, that you have to wrap your head around. This is like how you've made your living for the last two years. You've come to kind of trust everybody. There's such a deep sense of vulnerability there because mm -hmm. you've trusted these people. And now that you know they're acting out of complete um, vengeance, what else are they gonna do? How else are they gonna slander me? I mean, it became personal. Mm -hmm. And then I had to go through the legal system for a year and a half with a case that mainstream courts didn't even know how to handle. Like I remember one judge was so, he was like, why would you force her to, to, 
do these movies. Like he couldn't wrap his head around it. Also that becomes like forcing like sex at some point, right? So how does that play into it legally? Right. And so interestingly, I remember when I was looking for a litigator because also no litigator wanted my case. They were like, oh yeah, you know, I don't want to deal with this kind of garbage, you know, you or I must be a garbage person or, I mean, it just kind of went like all over the place because they had their in-house attorney. And I ended up getting Anna Nicole Smith's attorney because I was like, okay, you know, these people at least have some sympathy for my situation. And they looked at it completely logical. They're like, these people are forcing you to perform one that they can't legally do that. And it was just hard. It's hard when you're fighting people who are kind of actually fighting you with your own money Mm -hmm. because I was one of their, I was pretty much their first contract girl. So that was the other thing I had to wrap my head around. Why are they fighting me so hard? Oh, because I've made them so much money. So they don't want to let me go, but they Mm -hmm. also didn't want to give me what's fair. Mm -hmm. So it was hard. It's hard mentally to tell yourself, you know, you've built your name, you've built your brand and it's all about to go away because, you know, you're kind of stopping. Like I just wanted what was fair. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even trying to, I wasn't even being, how do you say a diva about it? I wasn't like, well, give me $10 million and a new car and this contract. I just wanted to be adequately compensated because like mm-hmm. you said, they were paying me, I think it was 3000 a movie. Yeah. Wow. For scenes. So oh it was God. like nothing. Yeah. So that's why I was like, what? Um, yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy, crazy times. So that that left me with a bit of, I went back and forth for a few years, like, why was I so stupid? And I made such a bad decision. And, but you know, you, like you said, you, you pick yourself up. And that was at the end of the day, when I was able to walk out of the court, I hadn't, I was pretty low on funds, but I told myself I have my name, the ability to work. Mm-hmm. And I am. <laughs> no, I think that's why it's also so important not to, um, I guess, neglect like the real you because when you have these situations where you could, you know, essentially lose everything, like no one's um, exempt from that possibility mm-hmm. that if you acquired like enough skills throughout like your experience, then you could have someone take away everything and start from scratch and still build it back, right? right. Like I'm pretty confident now with myself like – if everything were to go down to zero, it would suck. I'm sure I would like have my moment. But once I collected myself, it's like, okay, well, what are the skills that I've learned, right? Like I've learned um, like social media marketing, right? I've learned how to do a podcast. I've learned yeah. how to create a brand, like all of these things. So because I've spent more time on Candace than Eva, I feel like I'm protecting myself if anything that, like happens again. But I don't see that happening again because I have a very bad taste when it comes to contracts. So I don't ever see myself <laughs> – be being beholden to somebody else again because it's just not where I want to want to be. Exactly. No, and I think that, like you said, we should never stop learning. We mm-hmm. should always teach ourselves to be resourceful. Now we have a lot more tools to not be as dependent. Like before, we were. That's how the industry changed too. We were completely mm-hmm. dependent on the studios before. Yeah, that's how we made our money. We signed, you know, even if we didn't sign contracts the studios were cranking out, you know, eight, 10 features a month. So there was kind of always a piece of the pie to go around. And I think now because novelties, I mean, there's just so many tangible things that are disappearing. Everything's really going online now with even streaming. That's why I've told girls too. a lot of your fans, you can never, ever, that's such a big concern that our fans are going to go away. I think they grow with you especially mm-hmm. the more you make yourself accessible, but accessible uh, with your boundaries. Right. You have to keep some boundaries. Like I remember doing a podcast a few weeks ago and one of the guys was like, well, you love yoga, you know, and you meditate, you should do some naked yoga meditation for your only fans. I'm like, no, 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 that's for me. Mm-hmm. Like I have to, I, I come with boundaries. There are some things that are absolutely for me. You know, I know that I remembered, like we said earlier, there were some shoots that I have nothing against super hardcore, but Mm -hmm. I physically could not bring myself to do it and look Mm -hmm. good, have a full face of makeup on, 
if I don't feel comfortable doing it, you're going to see that the fans are going to see that I never wanted to give or project who I wasn't. Mm -hmm. Not even just for the sake of a paycheck, but I think, as we said, you have to look back on your body of work and be proud of that or comfortable with it or happy with it. Right, because it doesn't go away. And it doesn't go away.